Well, the Oklahoma Sooners certainly have to be feeling terrific about themselves. Anytime you can beat Texas, that's nice. But, you know, when it's a hard-fought, earned win, hey, that momentum could go a long way. 45-40 to 40 in a game in which defensively, yeah, there were injuries, and yeah, at times there were struggles, but they found a way to win. But remember, it was a team that they had a lot in common with. Of course, defensive-wise, both banged up and both um, very vulnerable, especially against the pass. But offensively, both explosive, both able to run and throw effectively and can put up a lot of points, and we saw that last week. I bring that up because, again, Oklahoma and Texas had a lot of similarities. The Sooners are entering a game on Saturday they got to be careful about. It is a home game. It's been at home since mid-September since the Ohio State game. But the October 15th, 11 a.m. kickoff with Kansas State, the Sooners could not be facing a team any more different from them. Even though I know Bob Stoops coached under Bill Snyder at Kansas State in the mid-80s and in the early 90s. That part I'm aware of. But again, offensive-wise, two different offenses. K-State will rely on the run more than they will the pass. And they are not shy at all about running as much play clock as possible and trying to shorten the game. They certainly did two years ago in that upset win in Norman. That was two years ago. Uh, the Sooners, of course, are the air raid attack. Running game has to work, but of course, it's more predicated upon the pass than it is the run. And play clock really hardly ever comes into a factor when it comes to the center offense. So obviously, check mark for Oklahoma. But again, the Sooners know they're not facing Texas's defense. Okay, this is where Kansas State uh, could draw a little closer to even. K State's defense is the best in the Big 12, statistic wise. Okay, and if you watch my Big 12 team by team previews back in August. You know that I said that K-State could be one of the best defenses around, and some of them are making me look like a genius in that area. We're turning, I think, eight starters or nine starters from that D a year ago. Kansas State has chemistry, okay? They got chemistry, they got better in leadership, and they're very effective against both the run and especially against the pass. Now, we mentioned earlier K-State, uh, number one in the Big 12, rush D, scoring D, and total defense. What helps them is when you can get – Effective play from your corners. And D.J. Reed, the big interception he had a week ago for a touchdown against Texas Tech. One of the biggest differences in the game. Either he or Duke Shelley, the other corner, will be matched up against D.D. Westbrook. So don't expect Westbrook to be open as often or with as much space during plays like he had against Texas. This will be a bigger challenge, a more physical Kansas State defense, but a defense that will not give you a whole lot of room. Um, Linebacker-wise, Elijah Lee can play. He is easily their leading tackler uh, so far for 2016. Um, and the defensive line with Will Geary at DT and also uh, Jordan Willis at defensive end. And by the way, one thing that we have learned in the recent past, and I'm not saying this is why Oklahoma uh, lost to Ohio State. In retrospect, we, we should have known that OU was doomed from the start in that game because of the overall talent discrepancy the fact that Ohio State played a better game. But remember that week, of course, the comments that Austin Kendall, the OU backup QB, had said about Ohio State having a, quote, basic defense in the quote, and that Baker should be able to blow them out. And if I, meaning Austin, gets into the game, I should be able to do the same thing, too. Well, of course, Ohio State didn't forget that because at the end of the game, you see the big signs that the Ohio State players are holding up saying, basic, in quotes, defense. Again, that's not why OU lost. But it didn't help matters. Well, leave it up to Jordan Willis after a post-practice in which reporters talking to him, he said something that I'm sure caught the eye of Lincoln Riley and the rest of the Oklahoma staff and Samaje and Mixon in particular. He said that Samaje P. Ryan and Joe Mixon are very easy to tackle. What? He really said that? <laughs> He did. So one of two things is going to happen. Jordan Willis is going to be eating crow, and so is that K-State defensive unit. And I'm not saying P. Wright even has to have another 200-yard game, but you got to think Joe Mixon's going to come back after the below-average performance he had against Texas. Um, we'll find out if those guys are easy to tackle, okay, Jordan? Okay, I'm, I'm sure it's one of those comments that you know, you'd love to take back, and if not, then you're crazy. Um, so it's either going to be something that 
eats Kansas State up after the game, and Willis will never be able to live it down, or Jordan Willis is going to look like a genius, and the ground game is going to be ineffective. Now, the one thing I will tell you, this is the best offense that K-State has faced all year long, okay? It is the best offense. I know West Virginia's got a good offense. Oklahoma's offense, my opinion, is better. Um, better running game, of course, better passing game. Offensive line, that's done a very good job. So, you know, for Jordan Willis, okay, we'll see if um, he can back up his words or if he'll end up eating his words. Now, if you remember the game last year, um, maybe he's basing it upon last year because OU, you know, didn't have a big game running, but they didn't need it. They won 55 to nothing, okay? It was the week after the Texas loss, and Baker Mayfield dissected the Kansas State defense, and there was a snowball effect, uh, you know, after that, because once OU, uh, you know, got ahead early, it just kept building and building, and before you knew it, the second stringers, maybe even the third stringers, were in the game by third quarter, and they were scoring too. But last year's game, you know, you know, P. Ryan, I think, had like five yards of carry, about 75 yards, and Joe Mixon had even – Less yardage than that. But again, it didn't have to be a good running day because you know, K-State, whose who's past defense was far worse last year than what you'll see you know, this Saturday, a big improvement for K-State. Last year, the uh, K-State defense stood no chance against Baker. So if you have something that's working, well, keep doing it. And it was pretty much the Baker Mayfield show last year in Manhattan. But again, don't expect 55 to nothing again. Sooners are favored by 10 and a half. But I don't think it's one of those games, unlike last year, where they'll just be able to name their score at will. Be a little tougher this time. Something else to keep in mind, too, takeaways. Okay, You wonder why K-State has been successful in Norman each of their last two trips. They won the takeaway battle. Okay, they won the. We know that they've won the battle in terms of time of possession, but turnovers have been the big, big thing. They've either scored off the turnovers or they've set themselves up because of a takeaway. K-State this year, plus six. Plus six in takeaway margin. The Sooners just the opposite, minus six. In fact, the Sooners have only forced five turnovers so far this season, and we're almost halfway through it. And the Sooners have been hurting themselves with turnovers, minus 11 as far as giving it up. So minus six overall in the uh, takeaway category. That definitely cannot be the trend entering this game. Otherwise, the Sooners are going to find themselves on Sports Center, saying one of the biggest upsets of the day, K-State beating Oklahoma, and it was the turnovers. I promise you if K-State wins this game, it'll be because they um, were more careful with the ball to carry the ball better than the Sooners. Um, looking at the injury situation real quick, uh, talk about the offense. Um, as we wrap up our offensive discussion of OU, uh, looks like Jonathan Alvarez will play. Of course, we thought that last week against Texas, um, but wasn't ready to go. Of course, he's had concussion issues, but it does look like um, he's likely to play against Kansas State, and they'll need him. Uh, defensively, of course, last week was a disaster even before the game started with five players who at one point had started this year for the Sooners, didn't even play against Texas, and then more injuries mounted up during the game, including uh, that of the MCL sprain of uh, Micaiah Quick, who was really starting to get the quarter position a little bit better, but they'll be without him for a month and a half. Um, doesn't look like you're going to have Matt Diamond or Charles Walker uh, play against K-State on Saturday. Didn't see Walker last week, okay? He said the concussion problems. And Matt Diamond with the Achilles injury, he hasn't played um, since the Ohio State game. And that was back in mid-September. So he's been out for about a month. And unlikely that Diamond or Walker can play. And that hurts a little bit because they are your defensive ends. And uh, you might remember Ahmad Thomas last week. Took a knee to the head, but it does look like he's probable. In fact, um, he's been practicing this week. And Will Johnson, um, we haven't seen him play lately. Didn't see him play last week. Uh, but Bob Stoops has upgraded him to probable for this week. And if he can play, that should help uh, free safety Stephen Parker, who had to play free safety, strong safety, and Wolf's position at Nickelback at one point. So talk about an opportunity to free up Stephen Parker's um, responsibilities and have him focus back at free safety, you could do that if Will Johnson can come back to play against Kansas State on Saturday. And um, that right there is a look at the injury situation for the Sooners um, as we have it right now. In terms of personnel changes on defense, could see Jordan Parker 
the freshman from California play at the corner opposite of the other Jordan. Of course, that's Jordan Thomas. Right now, Jordan Parker is number one on the depth chart. Not bad for a true freshman, but especially not bad for somebody whom in August wasn't even on the depth chart. He's worked his way to number one ahead of uh, Parrish Cobb. Um, the Sooners defense knows it's about being disciplined against a multiple offense like K-State. K-State will frustrate you by eating as much of that play clock as possible. They don't like long games. Unlike most Big 12 offenses like the Sooners, like the Longhorns, like the Cowboys, the Mountaineers, Texas Tech, TCU, Baylor, who love to throw the ball like crazy, Kansas State will run more than they throw. They'll try to control the line of scrimmage, and they'll try to do so with their two biggest running threats, and that's Charles Jones, who had a nice game last week against the Red Raiders, over 120 yards rushing, even though I know Tech's defense, in terms of the rush, or in terms of everything, is one of the worst in the country. That's been established. Um, but still, for Jones, a nice game. And the other running threat is a quarterback, you know, Jesse Ertz. Not so much of a terrific thrower, but as a runner, you got to be able to watch out for him, especially if he gets into the open field. So... Um, with the absences of Walker and Diamond, it, it could very well have an effect of the game if they don't go. If not, you have to count on Jordan Wade. You have to count on you know Matt Romar, who's definitely played better. And, of course, DJ Ward, um, you'll have his services as well. So uh, this will really be a test for the defensive line on the defense, in which we know the secondary has had problems. The linebackers have had injuries. At times look good. At times have happened. But when you look at the front layer, that defensive line, I think this has been a good area so far this season for the Sooners, and it will be the key because, again, I think K-State will really try to control the ball with the clock, and they'll try to eat up yardage and, of course, minutes as well. Um, but doesn't mean that they won't throw the ball either. Can't forget about Dominic Keith, 14 yards uh, per catch, two touchdowns, and their receiving slash special team specialist, Byron Pringle, 17 yards per catch and a touchdown. And don't forget, too, that he ran a kickoff back for a touchdown last week, right before halftime, and that pivotal win over Texas Tech, okay? So offensively, they've got some things there. You might be saying to yourself, yeah, they scored five touchdowns last week in their win. Remember, um, only three of those touchdowns were on offense. One by Pringle on the kickoff return. The other was by um, DJ Reed, uh, the corner, um, who uh, picked off a pass and ran it back for a touchdown in the first half in the win over the uh, Red Raiders. Um, K-State's offense, you know, we're talking about the defense being pretty good, but the offense is only, uh, they're only averaging 344 yards a game. Most of it is on the ground, 189, only 155 per game through the air. So you can take out the run first, then you can make Ertz throw the ball, and that's not his strong suit. So while I don't think Oklahoma is going to score 45 points in this game, I don't think they're going to give up 40 either. I think that's pretty safe to say. Uh, big thing is avoid the big play. And make sure you know where you're supposed to be because K-State's one of those teams that will make you pay for any busted assignments that you have. You might be saying, well, that's the way it is with a lot of teams. But Bill Snyder teams, especially because they're so tactical. Final thoughts in this game. A couple of things that I think the Sooners have to do to increase your chances of winning on Saturday. Number one, get 55 to nothing out of your mind. Get last year out of your mind. It's a different game. K-State's better this year on defense in particular, and the Sooners come in a lot more banged up. K-State the healthier team. So take last year and just put it out of your memory bank. And then number two, you know, you feel good about winning last week against Texas, but the Cotton Bowl and the Longhorns better not be on your mind this Saturday. you got to focus on the opponent at hand. That's Kansas State, who plays a much different brand of football, and in my opinion, a more disciplined part of football. Turnovers in this game, three or four could lose you the game, and it could have lost you the game against Texas. So, discipline team in this game is going to win because K-State, almost as much as any team I've ever seen in the Big 12, really stresses discipline. I think the Sooners get enough points in this game, and I think that they win it 31-20, to just covering that 10.5 point spread. Don't forget about my show later this week which is called Let's Talk College Football. And my post game of OU Kansas State will be sometime late Saturday afternoon, early Saturday evenings. Check it out. Boomer Center.